The Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu once again defended Saturday's raid, which carried humanitarian aid, the ships did, as well as pro-Palestinian activists, to Gaza. But whether there was anything carried aboard those ships other than aid to Gaza is in dispute. And today, the UN Human Rights Council, by a vote of 32 to 3, authorized an international probe into the incident. Saturday's raid killed nine activists, hundreds more taken into Israeli custody, though today Israel deported at least a large number of those activists without pursuing prosecution. The Israeli government maintains that its troops acted in self-defense after being attacked by passengers with knives and clubs. But witnesses from the ships claim otherwise, like Shane Dillon, an Irish citizen aboard one of them, who said that Israeli forces launched an assault, quoting, they attacked us in international waters. Another passenger saying, quote, we were not armed, we did not go there to fight. As promised, let's turn now to the former United States Chief of Mission in Baghdad and former Deputy Director of President Reagan's White House Task Force on Terrorism, Edward Peck. Ambassador Peck, thanks for your time tonight. I'm honored. You were on one of those six ships. Describe what you saw, please. Well, we were on a small ship, mm -hmm. uh, 54 people, uh, 30 meters long, and uh, the Israelis boarded us by stepping off the deck of their boat onto the deck of our boat, and we looked up, and there they were. You know, they were in the room with us, if you will, armed. They had the balaclava masks on, mm -hmm. which they kept on the whole time, and the struggle where I was was over when it started. I mean, you know, our, our instructions were to provide passive resistance by getting in the way or blocking access, but it was too late. The people on the upper deck went in to uh, occupy the wheelhouse so that the Israeli soldiers could not get in there and were forcibly removed. Uh, several people had wrenched arms and twisted necks and uh, you know some scars and bruises and arms and slings afterwards and everything. There was no killing and there was no, uh, one, one uh, stun grenade was set off stunning one of our people. But the struggle was brief and it was over rather quickly with no critical injuries. The points of contention here, whether there were passengers armed on your ship or other ones, and what kind of weapons the Israelis had as they boarded. Can you speak to either of those questions? Well, I can speak to it as far as my ship was concerned. Mm -hmm. and nobody had any arms of any kind whatsoever that I ever saw and never displayed any. Uh, the Israelis came in in helmets and their combat suits. Uh, they carried uh, machine guns, uh, you know, and pistols and stun grenades and things like that. And a couple of them had paintball guns. Uh, two of the paintballs hit one of the members of our party, a gentleman named Joe Medors, who was a wounded veteran on the USS Liberty when the Israelis attacked that in the 67 war, if you remember. Mm -hmm killing and wounding uh, over 200 American servicemen on a U.S. Navy ship. So, uh, on the other ships, I don't know what they had. What I have found interesting, however, is how, how words get twisted. Uh, here was the big ship that we're looking at now on your screen, uh, which was in international waters with 600 passengers on board, men and women, and Israeli commandos come to attack the ship take the ship over, take command of the ship, and bring it into Israel. Now, the people on board didn't want to have the ship taken over, and they certainly did not want to go to Israel, mm -hmm. so they resisted. Now, if you want to call them attacking these peace-loving soldiers, that seems to be a twisting of the language beyond belief. They were defending the ship. They didn't come after mm -hmm. the Israelis. The Israelis came after them. So it, it, it's upside down, it's backwards, if you will because they were in a defense mode, mm -hmm. not an attacking mode. It, it, to, to some degree, has, the, has the, the political equation here also been a, a question of, of words being turned on their head? Because it seems as if it, it, there's, there's only, there are only two positions being offered now. Either you support the Israeli government in all things uniformly, they can do whatever they want, they could do whatever they wanted to in this situation, or f somehow you don't support the state of Israel's existence. It's, it's that, this has been drawn that dramatically. Did, what, what's your reaction to that, that re reality of American politics? Well, if you want to look at reality, and you're asking me for my view, mm -hmm. uh, well, let's, let, I'll say this again because I've said it before. No one in his or her right mind, 
and I recognize that not everybody qualifies, wants a bad thing to happen to one Israeli or one Palestinian or one American. But the sad truth of the matter is that bad things have happened, are happening, and will happen to all three groups because of what is going on in Palestine and Gaza and what isn't going on in Palestine and Gaza. And backing Israel is one thing. Backing Israel in everything she does is not only very bad for us, it's very bad for Israel. Edward Peck, former United States Chief of Mission in Baghdad, uh, just back from uh, the Gaza and the events uh, on, on the ships. Great thanks for your time and your insights, sir. I'm honored. Thank you, sir. We're honored.